Terry following up on the Variac repurposing of old DC power supplies. Several of you wrote to me and said, hey Terry, can you show us how to build one out of a Heath kit unit? Because they are much more available than the old Knight that you featured. So that's what we're going to do. I've got a Heath kit IP12. I've got the Variac. So let's gut it out and transform it. All right, there's the Knight that I did previously. You can see it fits well in the cabinet, looks really good. The Heath kit should follow suit. The only difference is, is this is a little bit deeper unit, but this cabinet is actually kind of a sheet metal pressed, whereas the front panel on the Knight was a thick, like eighth inch aluminum. So it'd be a little bit easier to make the new meteor cutouts in the Heath kit. So I've got all parts on hand, our meters, AC outlet, and of course, the Variac. So you see our outlet is here underneath the amp meter. That's what we're gonna do on the Heath. So I'm gonna remove the switch, punch that out, put the outlet there, and then our power switch will shift over here next to the fuse holder. But the first thing we need to do is scrap this thing out and modify the front panel. So here's the back of the unit. I'm gonna separate the front panel and do the work that I need to. This switch, hopefully I can reuse for our Variac line selector, okay? Obviously I'm gonna open these holes up for the meters, but first I need to separate the face from the chassis, get it on the mill. So all the hardware has been removed. Front panel easily pops off, ready for modification. I just need to remove these other components and get the layout for the new meters. So there's my pattern that I'm going to mill out to clear the base of the new meter. So this diameter right here is about 60 millimeters. And then of course you have the two studs sticking out to mount it to the face. I've got those center punched. So I'm going to mill this and I'm going to swoop out around those mounting holes so we have enough meat on the panel for the meters to mount. So it's time to get it on the mill. There's the panel mounted, squared up in the mill, ready for the process. Now you do not need to have a milling machine to do this, especially on these panels. You could probably modify the cutout with a Dremel tool or simply buy meters that fit in the existing holes. All right, milling is complete. My openings are just a little over 60 millimeters. Good to go. Let's get this thing off, clean it up, get the meters on it. All right, the openings are complete. Meters drop in pretty much like they're made for it. Time to get things installed and wired. All right, remember I told you we're gonna install the AC outlet here where the power switch used to be. So I have a Greenlee inch and a half punch. Just gonna put it right on through there. it on, make sure it's centered, and here we go. We have a hydraulic greenly punch, so you don't have to sit there with a wrench. Just push a button. But they're like four thousand dollars. I usually buy these punches on eBay for eh, fifty bucks or so. There it is. Well, there's the new front panel layout, power switch, fuse holder. There's a variac new outlet and we're going to use this switch for variac or line operation. There's the back of it, nice and clean, ready to wire. So I'm getting ready to wire up the new variac and I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at a new one. I'm like, what's missing? A power light. So one thing I really like about the design of the night is when this power jewels on 
it actually illuminates the meters. It really has a nice look to it. So that's what we're going to do over here. I'm not going to add a jewel. I'm just going to put an internal light that will illuminate the meters. And then you'll know it's on. Alright, the Variac is ready to be tested. I want to point out that I did not utilize the chassis. Okay, the chassis is just a bunch of weight and clutter that is not necessary because everything on our new Variac mounts right on the front panel. So wiring of the Heathkit IP12 to the Variac is complete. Now, somebody asked in the last video about the details of the AC line wiring. Well, there it is. It goes right to the AC socket, except for the hot lead, which runs over here to the switch and the fuse holder. I will be providing a detailed schematic, including how to wire the existing rotary switch so that you can repurpose as much of the Heath kit as possible into your new bench variac. I got the front panel reinstalled into the cabinet. Now since the original chassis used to have a rear mount that pulled the face towards the back with some sheet metal screws, now the front panel has to be mounted differently to the cabinet. So what I plan on doing is drilling the edge of the cabinet and putting in some sheet metal screws. I'll show that at the end of the video, but now it's time to test the Variac. Here we go, test time. Got the Variac powered up. We are in Variac mode. So you can actually control your AC output. In this case, I got a light bulb simulating that. Then if you go to line, it's full power. And you can see your current reading over here on the other meter. Working great. So to hold the face onto the cabinet, since that chassis is missing, I'm going to drill some holes here in the sides and add some little sheet metal screws. There she is, secure in the cabinet. Just two sheet metal screws on each side. This thing is super lightweight. A great addition for your test bench. Well, there they are, side by side. Started out with a knight. Now I moved over to a Heathkit IP12. Configuration inside is the same. Cosmetics are slightly different. But man, what a great instrument for your bench. So here is the schematic diagram that I promised you. It's pretty much the same diagram as I posted before. I added a little bit more detail. But the best diagram is the line drawing. So let me cut to that. So if you want to build one of these, there it is. Just follow the lines, guys, and you'll have yourself a very cool Variac for your test bench.